thanks for attending the talk. So today I'll talk about a bit of research that I've been doing uh, on geometric deep learning for event cameras. Um, so the main motivation for this work is uh, we know, all know there's a lot of papers now that you know use uh, dense representations of events, process them with the CNN, and then uh, basically generate some output. So these achieve very high performance, but uh, as you all kind of admit, uh, it's not the way that we should process events. They're dense. We're processing kind of um, artificially uh, generated zeros, right? Like, so, for example, one of these event histograms is very sparse, uh, and also they're very sparse in time, in, in, in time right? So um, what I've been uh, investigating is can we actually co-design the neural network and the, uh, the event, to the events um, so that we can get simultaneously very efficient but also very powerful processing. And um, uh, actually, before we go here, maybe I want to go into kind of a, a small tangent explaining why we actually have to care about efficiency. So imagine that you have this scenario, you want to detect something very in very low latency. It's one of the use cases of event cameras, right? So imagine there's a pedestrian, for example, walking onto the street. Um, what is the worst, ca worst case latency that we can expect from a vision-based algorithm based on images? So the way that uh, I basically go about this is I, I say, okay, um, this happens just when we la had the last frame, and now we are waiting for the next frame to actually get this information, and then we have to process this frame. So how does this total latency then stack up? It's basically half of, it's, it's actually once the, uh, the interval plus whatever computation time you needed in your algorithm, right? Um, so I hope that's kind of non-controversial. Um, here now is the use case of an event camera. So because event cameras can actually maintain data in a rolling buffer, they don't have to uh, wait for the next frame, right? They can just trigger processing as soon as the last um, step is done. And it means that essentially uh, your worst case latency is actually just waiting for the last processing step to finish and then execute another one. And what, what you can see is that, pretty interestingly, in this low range of uh, computation time, event cameras are significantly better than frame-based cameras. So we actually have an interest in reducing this computation time significantly so that we can actually go and uh, leverage the low latency of the, of the camera. So for this reason, I've been interested in, uh, in developing a, a kind of new class of asynchronous neural networks. Um, it's kind of a line of work that uh, started with submanifold graph neural networks. Now it's uh, graph neural networks. The key idea is that you, on the left, you train a neural network which processes event graphs, graphs that are generated from events as nodes in the graph, and you uh, output, you, gr you process them with a, a standard graph neural network, you train it in a standard supervised way, and then you deploy this network in a synchronous fashion where it has exactly the same output, but essentially for each new event you, you propagate changes throughout the network. So what you see here, these like light green parts of the network, they're basically nodes that have to be recomputed based on the receptive field of each event. And um, <clears throat> Uh, this has two benefits. One of them, it, it maintains the sparsity in the events. When there's no events, there's no graph, there's no computation, right? Uh, and also, uh, when there's new events, we can efficiently insert events into the graph. Um, there's a very fast kind of CUDA impl implementation that, that does this, uh, that, I've, that I've written. And, um, and here I'll go a little bit more into detail on what, what's exactly happening. So imagine you have this event graph on the left. Um, you have some processing stages. Now imagine we get a new event. We insert this event into the graph, so we have a new edge and a new node. Um, and then as we go deeper into the network, we basically have to update uh, k-hop neighborhoods of this, uh, of this new node. And what's, what's interesting about this is that compared to having to pro reprocess everything, this is a very significantly smaller subset of the nodes that we have to reprocess. Um, and so we can actually uh, plot now these models in a kind of uh, 2D plot where on the bottom, uh, on the x-axis, I have the flops per new event. So you insert a new event, you compute how, much, how, much, uh, how many uh, flops do I need to process uh, the event. And on the y-axis, you see the, the accuracy. And uh, we see on the right side, we see these CNN-based methods. They're very accurate, they're quite high, but they're also very far to the right. So they have high computational um, uh, computation demands. Um, by contrast, now we have here these stars, which are kind of the new asynchronous methods, starting with the ASINET. It's the uh, submanifold graph neural network, uh, um, sparse convolutional neural network. And then uh, now culminating in these EAGR, um, which are the kind of um, asynchronous graph neural networks. 
Um, so we see we have a, about three orders of magnitude fewer computations, but still we're missing a bit in terms of, uh, in terms of accuracy, but that's, it's kind of ongoing research. Um, w- recently I've been interested in now how can we actually combine this with images. So we all know that images do have some information that we can still use, uh, notably texture, color information, a lot about uh, the, the background. And uh, here I've actually uh, developed a method which uh, can, with a CNN, process the RGB image, generate some detections, some kind of bank of features, and then this, this bank of features can be reused uh, very efficiently to uh, redetect the object uh, throughout time by adding in, in individual events. So what we're seeing here now is the time window going, um, increasing in time, so you, it's, uh, the, the time is moving forward. And in this way, we can simultaneously track, feed, uh, track objects, although we don't have the ID. Um, we can also read it, uh, detect new objects, and we can also forget about objects uh, in an event-by-event event, uh, fashion. Um, there's also kind of a more fundamental um, uh, motivation for why we should actually combine events and frames. So here... I want to show you the bandwidth latency trade-off. So, of course, we could always say, well, we could do any of these tasks with a high frame rate camera, right, But uh, and to reduce the latency. But this also increase, increases the bandwidth. So what we actually achieve by combining events and frames is to significantly reduce the latency with a small um, penalty in terms of uh, band- bandwidth. Um, here I'm just showing you kind of... Uh, how it looks like, uh, this is part of a new data set that we're l- releasing, which has RGB images, events, and, um, and, uh, and, and object detection labels. It's kind of a labeled version of the DSEC. Uh, and uh, here's, again, kind of visualization of what our al- algorithm actually outputs, these kind of um, spatiotemporal object detections. Um, here I'll show you uh, kind of the one of the advantages of using such an approach. Um, by adding events, we can essentially um, see into the future at least uh, more at least one frame uh, and detect uh, potentially uh, traffic participants uh, running onto the street earlier than if we used, for example, an image-based method. Um, uh, this is a little bit more apparent here in this dash cam video, uh, where you um, you actually don't see the car, but you actually see the events of the car. So now we can detect the car um, crashing into the into the right car much earlier. Uh, here's another use case in in low light scenarios. So, I mean, we can still use the advantages of the event camera to detect the pedestrian that's standing over there. It's maybe a little bit hard to see. And uh, here we have this uh, a scenario where we're exiting a tunnel and the auto exposure of the camera is, uh, is causing some issues. So we can actually detect the, uh, the car uh, more easily with the events than with the RGB images alone. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Uh, here's a link to the data set it, uh, if you're interested in uh, continuing this research.